and welcome back to the final segment of our show this morning. We have been joined on the set by our friends from the Belize Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and they will speak to us on the Chamber's response to COVID-19 and business continuity. That being said, we have with us Catherine Main. She is a member of the National Oversight Committee. Good morning. We also have Kay Menzies. She's the past president of the Belize Chamber of Commerce. Good morning, Kay. And we also have Giacomo Sanchez. He's the treasurer of the Belize Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Good morning, all. Good morning, my friends. Uh, let's begin, first of all, by talking about the chamber's response, perhaps to collective concerns from members in response to COVID-19. Would you like me to start? OK. Sure. Yeah. I got the eye. All right, so first and foremost, um, the Chamber has been acti actively um, collaborating with, within the Oversight Committee, also with the task force as well. I must yes. say we also have a, um, a member on that task force, and his name is Dr. Andre Sosa. Um, in terms of the collaborative efforts, there's a number of different activities and, and, um, and um, things on the way, in a sense. Um, some of them include um, collaboration on the collection of data, mm -hmm. right? Yes. We have to make data-driven decisions as best as we possibly can. Of course, time is not allowing us to do that in many ways, yeah. but we are, we, are, we are doing so as best we can. Um, some of the things, and I will give the plug from the start, is um, we have a survey that we're circulating to yes. our members, mm -hmm. and also we placed it onto our website mm -hmm. and via our social media feeds as well. And that is essential because th that survey is asking business owners the questions that are essential for us to then be able yeah. to better mm -hmm. analyze the financial effects, mm -hmm. right? And um, the, the loss, to, loss of, of li the layoff effects as yeah. well, mm -hmm. to add to, and, and many other components. So that's one of the areas we're collaborating. Um, we've been actively collaborating with the Labor Department as well in trying to address um, points that our, our members are bringing to us. Um, such as the point of temporary layoffs and mm -hmm. what does that mean, right? Yeah. Um, so there, there's all of these different components behind the scenes that are happening for us to be able to be a contributor as best as possible. One yeah. of the key um, points as well that we're working on is, is ideas and suggestions and a wish list of the various measures for employer stimulus arrangements, yeah. right? At some point, we will get into our recovery stage and we will come out of this. And what mm -hmm. is essential is that our economy gets moving during and after, yeah. right? We have to think about all those components as yeah. well. Alongside the most significant, which is the health. We have to yeah. factor in the yeah. health of our people, um, our nation, but we also have that economic component and we're trying to contribute as best as possible in that area. I guess that's a balance that, mm -hmm. that we're all trying to keep at this time. We can see the economic impact immediately, but we recognize that the primary focus right now has to be what's taking place in, in the health um, aspect of the pandemic. We've heard the stories of the layoffs. We've heard the explanation of where the aid will go at this point in time. Um, Catherine, you mentioned that you started your survey. What's some of the preliminary data saying so far? Um, basically, what we're finding is that um, businesses don't, in terms of layoffs, businesses don't regard that as the first move. Mm -hmm. um, there are some that have no choice because of the quantum of employees they have versus yeah. going down to absolutely no business at all. But what we found was that sort of ranked third on the list of things to do first. Yeah. What we also found were, was that, on average, businesses figured that um, the fall off in, in business would be at least 20% of their annual um, projections. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is scary, because if 20% of your income disappears overnight, and it may be that some will find that this is conservative along the way, mm -hmm. um, they, they, you, you have to find a way to make that up, because you still have your bills to pay, you still yeah. have your bank financing. Mm -hmm. One of the um, collaborators in this crisis that has been absolutely sterling and coming out fairly early up, uh, as we're feeling our, our way through this is the central bank. Mm -hmm. And they have worked with the banks to institute some measures to give relief. But in a, in a problem of this magnitude, everybody has to find, it has to find a way through yeah. that's gonna, it's gonna have a cost. The idea is to have as minimal a cost as possible. The survey's been pretty good about that. What we will probably do is issue more surveys along the way as we go through this. For example, for employers to figure out 
if I'm going to come out the other end, if I'm going to be able to reopen mm -hmm. in the case of those who are totally closed, what, how much financing will I need in order to have that happen? So we will be continuing to gather data as we go. Just a question, what, what time frame are you using? You say a, a 20 percent um, less than currently projected, but we don't know how long we'll be experiencing whether people have voluntarily closed or have been um, told to close down. What time frame are businesses using? Um, different businesses are using different estimates, but a lot of it is tied to what happened to the tourism industry. Yeah. And so if you, if you look at that and you look at the trajectory of COVID-19 in other countries, basically this tourism season is over and what, what, we're, what, what you're seeing out there is people are projecting for hopefully a, a slow start of when we're back in the usual tourism cycle, so maybe September, October, okay. um, for, for a, a beginning of the next season, no? But it's anybody's guess. Yeah, I'm hearing, I'm hearing yeah. ranges outside of that. Yeah, yeah. I do. Um, if I were to um, kind of look um, further along into this year, um, one of the, the, the key aspects of the, the, the tourism coming back is the fact that people who travel, who would come to our destination, if they don't have the appetite to travel. Mm -hmm. So I think you're right in saying yeah. that um, it, the, this tourism season is pretty much over. Mm -hmm. And so that's the magnitude of. Uh, potential losses at least mm -hmm. to, to businesses and business owners mm -hmm. um, in, in industry and all the ancillary um, sectors that, that depends on it. Within your membership as as a representative body, do you find from businesses that perhaps they did not have certain contingencies in place to deal with something of this nature? I mean, it's the first of a kind for us, uh, but do you find that perhaps similarly to how some businesses have certain measures in place in the event of a hurricane or, or something of that sort. Do you find that perhaps there were any contingencies as to why some, if not a majority of businesses have shut down as a result? Um, I think Giacomo would be in the best place to answer the, the business situation. What I will say as an overall observation is that most businesses are not able to cushion themselves mm -hmm. several months out mm -hmm. in the current climate. They've been able to, we've been able to pay our bills and get along and, you know, meet our financing requirements and this kind of thing. But to, it's very few businesses that you find that have that kind of financing cushion that says, listen, I can weather a storm of six months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so if we examine, um, look at the spectrum of our economy, um, there's quite a bit of businesses that uh, what we consider small and medium in our context. Yeah. And without any level of sophistication, they don't do proper planning and budgeting, yeah. and so it comes down to dollars and cents that you haven't been setting aside anything, therefore you're a crisis of this magnitude, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, wherever you can get some assistance, help, I think that is where, w th that, that's where we are as a country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who do you see being, I mean, the tourism sector understood, but looking at, at the range of businesses in the country, who do you see having the worst effect, facing the worst effect? I think it's across the board. Um, the, 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 there's no. Um, you think we'll have small business owners who won't open up back? Um, it will be a struggle. Mm -hmm. It will be a struggle. Yeah. What will be the difference between some of these businesses being able to recover or not? Access to financing. Uh, yeah. and, 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 and timely too, because you know they, they might be uh, commitments towards the, the, their efforts. However, if the money isn't coming, then you can't reopen. You can't pay pay your staff coming back of this um, furloughed time, so to speak. Yeah. So, I mean, that, th those are the challenges that- What I face. find interesting as an observation here is the fact that a lot had been invested in a manner of speaking into uh, ensuring business, um, business continuity, sorry, in times of natural disasters, mm -hmm. but never in our wildest imagination would we have fathomed the idea of needing business continuity in something like this where we hadn't yeah. experienced it before. Well, and, and this is the thing, it's, it, it's hard to plan for a 100 year event. Mm -hmm. The last time you had a, a, a pandemic impact the entire planet quite this badly, mm -hmm. it was, and everybody's talking about it, the Spanish mm -hmm. influenza. Mm -hmm. So it's, now there are those out there, Bill Gates is one, but there are those out there who have for years been saying we have to yeah. be prepared for the next pandemic. Mm -hmm. but we, 
if you're, if you're running a small business, you have so many daily fires to put out, a pandemic is the last thing on your mind. Yeah. And, and this is the truth of business yeah. worldwide, is you're busy trying to do business. Um, and usually, if where you find good pandemic response, such as in Asia, mm -hmm. it's because they have had pandemics in recent times. They've mm -hmm. had SARS, they've had H1, H1N1, yeah. bird flu, all these. And, and it has prepared them for this moment. Mm -hmm. What I would hope is when we come out of this, um, that we learn that, first of all, this is likely not the last. Mm -hmm. And second of all, that we develop a quick response approach that allows us to weather these kinds of moments. But even so, in a small business um, uh, context, the idea for something like this is who has good cash reserves to mm -hmm. keep their employees going, to mm -hmm. keep their business going to some degree, or, or to shut down and take a break and say, I will do this in the meantime, and it's mm -hmm. okay when we open, I'll open. Yeah. It's very few businesses at the, at the base of the pyramid yeah. that yeah. are able to do that. And I, and I can imagine people at home are probably watching and saying we're talking about businesses, but what about the employees and the people who are not receiving a salary mm -hmm. or have been laid off? But they're right. tied together, you know, the they business are. has to support the, the staff. Um, and that's a question I really want to get at. I've had so many people contact me, people who own businesses and say, listen, I don't know, should I fire my employee? Because it seems that the current um, uh, recovery efforts will be for persons who've been unemployed. And as you mentioned, quite a number of businesses have moved towards sending employees home, saying, giving them as little as they can, some nothing, and saying, when we open back up, you can come back. Mm -hmm. What are you doing in terms of advocating in people in positions like that? And what do you say to employers who are saying, it may be easier if I fire my employee and they'll get something from Social Security? I'll ask Kathy to. You know, this was a point that we've been discussing. and. Yeah. Um, Part of that comes right back to one of the, one of the key points that we're working on, which yeah. is um, support um, for employers. There is a way of, I've, I've been hearing um, some of the same, but yeah. some of the reverse, where yeah. there are a number of employers that are trying their best not to let go their employees. Yeah. They understand that when we're in that recovery stage, they will need those yeah. persons back, mm -hmm. right? And there are some loyalty components and, and some empathy and morality components yeah. that come into mm -hmm. this as well, right? Um, so that is a critical question yeah. that we are trying to develop further, and a part of that is providing those, one, one, one aspect of that is providing employer stimulus and support so that they are not, they can then afford to prioritize mm -hmm. their employees remaining with them yeah. as well so yes th you're right 100% um, and that's another that's a component that we need to continue our conversations with the czars mm -hmm. um, and with within these committees as well yeah I, I think it's a point needed to be clarified yeah. because if if the $150 every two weeks is only going to go to persons who are unemployed as mm -hmm. registered by BTB or SSB then I mean yeah. if I were an employer I'd feel the same if I'm not giving you money and I don't want to let you go I may just feel like the best thing to do is to let you so go. So you can yeah. access that. Yeah. It's, it's a tough one, and this is where I think we can't stress enough that everybody's in this together. Yeah. Employer, employee, mm -hmm. um, everybody's in this together. And if we're going to, to build back quickly, yeah. we're going to need to build confidence back quickly, yeah. both in terms of employers and employees. The idea is not to throw anybody out on permanent unemployment, and preferably not to throw anybody out on any kind of unemployment. Mm -hmm. But to do that, it means government and the private sector working together to say, look, I'm going to take some of the load off you, the employer. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that you maintain your employee as a, as a yeah. result. Okay. So yeah. for example, the bank saying, don't worry about financing for the moment. Take a break on that. Then the idea is then trans transfer that to another cost, preferably mm -hmm. yeah. your employment Social cost. Security has yeah, SSB yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. SSB yeah. has done really well with that. So. The idea is that everybody's going to take a hit. There is no escaping yes. taking some kind of a haircut off this, whether you're employer, employee, whoever. But the idea is that we spread that pain across in such a way that nobody suffers unduly. So yeah. if we can minimize unemployment or even, or even find a way out of it, then we're way better off than saying, hey, everybody, lay off half your staff. That just doesn't work. See, no, from there there are a lot of. Yeah. Um, no, I was just going to say, uh, tailing off of what uh, Kay just mentioned, um, a lot of um, the indeterminate factor in, in this whole situation is that in, as business owners, you don't have the luxury of 
um, doing a proper projection or mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. analyzing how far out because of the, the, the uncertainty in terms of how long this will yeah. ensue. And so um, to me, that, that is critical. And, and to me, the public-private partnership, if I was to inform that, that, that um, decision making, it is really you know something, um, redirecting certain amount of taxpayers dollars to ensure that you know you maintain a maintain a staff but then as a business owner you need to then match that just to ensure that people just keep bread on the table mm -hmm. from a business perspective or from a sort of economic outlook i think another observation to be made here is how <coughs> fragile our economy is based on the fact that tourism is the greatest yeah. driver and when tourism takes a hit you see that everything else is part of that ripple effect. Yeah. What has been some of the observations from within the membership of the, the yeah. BCCI in respect of what's happening with tourism and how they are adversely affected as well? You want to go first, Kat? <laughs> yeah. No, you go and then I'll come. Yeah. No, um, no it's, it's for us, uh, obviously the obser observation has been for everybody that tourism mm -hmm. took the, the hard hit. A lot of businesses are trying to figure out the diversification end, and okay. agriculture is saying, this is why you need to strengthen us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for they example, have been saying, yeah, they've yeah. been saying that for years. You know, guys, it's got to be more than this. There's mm -hmm. the discussion, the eternal discussion of value added in agro processing and yeah. this mm -hmm. kind of thing. There's the eternal discussion. Um, one overlooked segment is BPOs mm -hmm. and, and really what they do for us as a foreign exchange earner themselves. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is not to vilify any part of the economy because last year we had a tremendous drought and mm -hmm. we were questioning whether agriculture was the way to go. Mm -hmm. The idea is to, to make sure you diversify enough that when one industry gets hurt, the other industries can step in to make mm -hmm. up yeah. the, the space. That mm -hmm. is not a total collapse. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, the, the, the other side of that argument is that I mean, we've always been selling the jewel. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? by not expanding and in, infusing more investments as an investor yeah. in, in the entire um, tourism sector. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, a it's, a, it's a challenge yeah. because there's a great deal of opportunity when it's working. Yeah. Um, and and like, like, like you said, I mean, um, this is 100 years ago, the, the, this was the experience then. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, we don't know when the next one might come, but in, in terms of getting through it right now, um, how our economy is structured, to me, that's the least of the, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the yeah, concern. But it it but has more to so be a primary it, lesson it learned mm -hmm. through this experience. Well, Sorry. Cor correct. What I was going to say to compliment her, well, in addition, the most important word there is diversity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? she said it, you said it about yeah. two or three times yeah. in that, and I think that's critical to remember. Um, the other component is this is an opportunity for all of us. Let's look at it from a business planning perspective, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. To identify where our weaknesses are within right. our businesses, you know, with across the board. You can take those circles up, you can bring those circles down, mm -hmm. and that's the essential rule that I yeah. think is also critical, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's not priority one, Correct. but it must be a part of it because as we've been talking about, this is, this is, this is a new normal, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. the, the thing is that the businesses that, that make it through this best will be the ones that, have anal that are analyzing the situation and saying, We've got to come out of this. So what we do now has to ensure that we're building blocks towards coming out of this. Yeah. And as, as the waters recede on tourism for the moment, look at what opportunities come to light. Mm -hmm. um, there have been and are many, many other opportunities with our, within our economy. Yeah. But everybody's been focused on what works. And mm -hmm. what, works right, what worked until about two weeks ago was tourism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not to say tourism won't ever work again. And Think about it. We have an advantage over our Car Caribbean brethren. Most of them are almost all tourism. Yeah. Yeah, we right. do have more diversification than them. Mm -hmm. The idea is just to build on that base. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but even looking long term, I think one of the unknown variables is the implications it will have on the U.S. economy and what that will mean mm -hmm. for the tourism industry moving forward. We can yeah. be declared COVID-19 free, free, you know, best case scenario, but we won't have North American tourists coming now. And if they don't have their... Um, their situation under control. Mm -hmm. So the long-term implications, I think that people, anyone who looks at what's happening, we realize it may be longer than just what we experience here. But I want to I wanna move the conversation forward because you, you have been speaking about business continuity. Mm -hmm. And very often in the midst of a crisis, it's hard to see anything beyond what's just in front of you. But that's what you're challenging 
your members to try to do. See how you can get through this period in phases or with strategic measures so that you can make it out at the other end. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Right. What are some of these strategies that you are um, suggesting? Work from home is, a, is, is one of the critical strategies I can speak for the BPO industry, and that's the direction, yeah. right? And, that, and, that, and that's important. That means that persons are able to continue to work, mm -hmm. right? Um, they are able to get income. They are also, um, across the board as well, these businesses bring in foreign exchange, as we talked about, yeah. right? So that's another component. Um, we see that happening in the BPO industry. We see that happening in a number of service industries as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll take that one to give everybody else yeah. a chance to. No, I was gonna, if you, if you look at what's happening right now, all of a sudden the idea of being in a store is kind of thinning out because yeah. social distancing and we don't know if we'll have a shutdown and so mm -hmm. on. So already the change has begun because some stores are starting to offer delivery mm -hmm. services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, businesses are looking to go online that two weeks ago would never have contemplated yeah. doing yeah, that. Yeah, there's innovation <laughs> happening rapidly. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So if you're in website building business, if you're in, in um, logistics business, this kind of thing, all of a sudden you're having more opportunity than you had two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's this kind of thing where you look and you, you, you see what's happening, you see what's trending, and will it continue, will it not? I don't think, once you learn that your groceries can be delivered to you at home and you can pay them by swiping a card on a portal, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're not gonna unlearn oh, we're that. We're never going yeah. back. <laughs> it becomes part of how you do business going yeah. forward. Right, so imagine all of a sudden, last week you were happy to run out to the store to mm -hmm. get whatever you needed, a toothbrush you drove down to the store, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, hold on, I can just order it online and a guy shows up at my door with my toothbrush and it's all paid yep. for and no exchange of cash and all that. Mm -hmm. These kinds of things happen. Work from home, imagine your, your employer used to think that you had to go in and sit in front of him for him to think you have a productive work day. All of a sudden, he has to work with you by Zoom or whatever yeah. system. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, he realizes, hang on a second, your productivity might be going up because yeah. you're not late well, on the bus, mm -hmm. you're, you're getting your full eight hours, not having to mm -hmm. worry about a commute or whatever. Mm -hmm. And these kinds of things. All yeah. those rain or flood days that we yeah. used to have. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, and so um, I, I do agree that, that the technology and innovation yeah. does help uh, to a great degree. But I mean, we're not all service. The, the yeah. other parts of our economy that depends on hands-on type. You know, we, got yeah. we have the construction yeah. industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thousands of people work in that industry. Yep. Um, the uh, anything, agriculture, you know. So mm -hmm. th there's certain things we can't just depend on, on technology. So. Yeah. So even those businesses now have to come with um, their own response in terms of how, how they stay afloat mm -hmm. and, and, and in terms of yeah. getting, on, getting on the other side of this um, pandemic. Now let's talk about the possibility of a shutdown. The Prime Minister, uh, I'd say infamously noted that he spoke to two doctors who suggested a lockdown and a business person who said don't mm. in his last press conference. Mm -hmm. And here we are today. Let me get the business perspective. If we were what are your thoughts on the country moving to a lockdown at this point in time? What we're seeing is that um, a lot of countries have, you know, you're, you're seeing enough examples that are way ahead of us on the famous curve. And some, a lot of people are using El Salvador as an example, and they're saying El Salvador completely locked down and they have barely have any cases, and that's a fair point. Um, what you have to do, though, is plan a lockdown. That's, a lockdown is, is probably inevitable. It's the thing that most doctors will tell you will, will that, that business of keeping distant breaks the chain and sometimes we just can't keep distant un until somebody tells us to. Mm -hmm. But a lockdown has to be planned very carefully because at the end of it, you want people to have jobs to come out to. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things that we're hoping that if we're moving to a lockdown, um, in some respects, I will tell you, some businesses are saying, I have so little business right now that I, I'm fine with locking down. Mm -hmm. And some are saying, I don't know how much longer I can afford to stay open. And that's a dangerous remark. Yeah. Because when they say that, and they go to lockdown, that's a sign that they may not open again. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want that because in this epidemic, it's, you, you have healthy people with no jobs, that's not a good balance either. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, if we're gonna continue and, and fight COVID-19 properly, we have to fight it with all the tools the medical people tell us are at our disposal. Yeah. The last thing we want is the community outbreak status to reach Belize. Mm -hmm. So you, you look at it that way, but plan it carefully. That's so, what we're so asking. Let's, so let's not leave any uncertainty. When you say that most likely you, you foresee a lockdown would happen, but you prefer all the planning to take place, what are we talking about here? Um, 
I, I think we've discussed it extensively in all cases. Yes, we have. Um, we have. And there are a number of components um, that, and, and, I, and I will say that um, the planning has already started. So it's not like it's, it's uh, just starting now, but there is a series of components. Um, Kimo mentioned the agricultural sector, right? So part of the planning process needs to include what sectors would be considered essential services. Mm -hmm. That's the critical component. Um, other sections, other parts of the, of the planning will include is there a curfew, is there yeah. not a curfew? How do we balance um, grocery stores, for instance? And then how can, can we identify ways to, um, to ensure, to, to try to ensure there is social distancing mm -hmm. um, when for essential services, for banks, for grocery stores, right? One mm -hmm. of the ideas that we've been talking about is, for instance, maybe um, even an odd number on, so on social security. Mm -hmm. So persons have access to going out um, between the hours of such and such, if you are your la the last number on your social security, mm -hmm. on, on your, the last number of your social security number is an even number, and, and another time if it's mm -hmm. an odd number. Mm -hmm. So all these different components need to be factored in. Um, there is also a transport um, por um, portion of that as well, mm -hmm. right? How do we practice social distancing responsibly yeah. um, via public transport? But what is what is the primary? Okay, let's let's go down Albert Street right now. Mm -hmm. Majority of places are closed, right. um, with the exception of the grocery stores, which have been doing an exceptional job in in, in serving Absolutely. us so far. So, I mean, people seem to be self-implementing mm -hmm. a, a shutdown already. So, yeah. what is the hesitation in just saying, you know, we the business sector acknowledge that this is the best thing for the country to minimize the spread? Don't know. Uh, no, I'm, I'm or if there has to be some I's dotted or T's crossed before, tell us what those are. Um, from our point of view, it's a matter of saying, look, you need to keep the people fed. You need to keep access to medications yes. and to banks. This is what's happening in most countries as yes. we're observing it. If you do a lockdown in that context and you do a lockdown grocery for bank, our, pharmacy, three yeah, things. Grocery, oh. banks, pharmacy, and the attendant, for example, in our, in our country, we, we can feed ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are agriculturally rich. Mm -hmm. So in order for that to happen, it's not just a grocery store that has to stay open, it's the processor. For yeah. example, the poultry processor, mm -hmm. if he's not putting out any chickens, sure. you're not getting any food no matter how the supermarket stays open, you're mm -hmm. not getting your, your chicken, sure. and so on and so forth. So the, 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 chain, the supply chain has to be cared for, but in a way that still spaces out. So yeah. You may ask the producers to move to a thinner shift system, mm -hmm. so okay. the worker if, and find a way to maneuver in that way, or you may, and and you still have a public transport issue that you have to address because workers have to go to work if they're going to provide you food. Yeah, these kinds of things require some thought, but there are precedents out there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't require months of thought. Yeah, um, the idea though is, in a in a lockdown, the motivation for lockdown is to take the majority of people off the streets, the street. put them in isolation, and break the chain of transmission. Yeah. You're right, people are starting to do it. I was joking on Friday that Friday traffic in the Belize city felt like Sunday traffic in mm -hmm. the Belize city. People are starting to find a way to stay off, stay off the streets and stay home. Yeah. But at this point in time, if we make it a universal message and say we're gonna do it in this way, be very clear in the messaging as to who stays open, who gets yeah. closed, and so on, so that, again, business people can plan and say, I'm with it. Yeah. But there is support out there for the shutdown. So, so what I'm hearing from you, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that it's not that you are against the shutdown. You just want to ensure that all the messaging is clear. What, what uh, stores or companies will remain open? Who's going to stay processing the materials correct. we need? Who's going to be bringing in the cargo, if that's uh, part of it as well? Mm -hmm. So these essential um, Everything. Mechanics need to right. need to keep going yes. so that even if people are at home and they're allowed to come out one at a time, as in Italy, mm -hmm. to get what they need, it's still available. Right, and that's yeah. and and do it carefully. The idea is not to keep us in prison because mm -hmm. that will create a different kind of yeah. a disaster. Yeah. Um, the idea is to do it in a way that we are properly isolated yeah. for the period of time necessary to sort of get the virus out of our airspace. I don't know that, I mean, we have to face the future with the virus in our lives, but right now the idea is to manage past a community outbreak and we 
as Belizeans have a responsibility to help the health pro professionals do that. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't help them, they become overwhelmed and that's, yeah. we've seen those stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, I, I, one business person is, is not representative of the entire business community. The chamber represents <coughs> over 900 employers. So, you know, the, the, conversation, <laughs> the conversation has- Careful yeah. of that cough. Right. <laughs> Luckily, we're Elmo, all socially Elmo. distant Elmo. from Giacomo. <laughs> But, yeah. but the whole idea is that, that we, do it, we do it in a way that yeah. doesn't cause people to starve to death or do without their medication. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now let, let me flip to something else. I think there's been quite a number of companies that have really done a great job in being able to uh, step forward and, and set the example um, as we face the pandemic. Some have sent home high-risk people to work from home, uh, elderly populations to work from home, pregnant women, just Without being asked, they've implemented mm -hmm. these types of structures. But there are some companies that aren't quite sure or perhaps are not implementing enough social distancing, um, being uh, adequately prepared in monitoring sicknesses or movements or reducing transmission. Uh, what are you doing in terms of helping members to, to have them be cognizant of, of the steps that need to be taken? The chamber's been passing out information correct we, yeah. ha we have an entire communication plan in oh. that talks about all of these different components part the critical comp the critical communication stream for such is our website yeah. and our social media feed social media you know is a whole ball game in, in marketing and, and communication and PR I, I would recommend that anybody, businesses, employers, employees, visit our website and yeah. also visit our social media feed to get access to facts. Mm -hmm. Additionally, get access to um, important information that can help you with your business continuity mm -hmm. planning. And yeah. um, there is in effect, there is in effect, um, in fact, a communication uh, a proposal that we put together, yeah. and it's on our website. And it's also you can also access it via our social yeah. media feed that gives you pointers on what you what you can be doing right now yeah. if you're an employer and trying to look for ways in which to ensure business continuity. Yeah. Yeah, and those were some of the interesting things I found in terms of staggering workers with the times mm -hmm. they come in or having different shifts for people to work. Yep. Just in the event someone gets sick, that you're not completely without the staff. Make sure that your people are cross-trained so that if one person shows symptoms, you can send them straight home and not interrupt your, your continuity. Yeah. Um, simple things like that that probably happen in other contexts too. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's another, that's a very good point. There are some companies that are putting their employees through training right now, mm -hmm. right? Um, they're, the tourism industry, um, we've heard this from many sources that what they're doing is similar to what they would do in the slow season, right? Uh -huh. Where they, they're starting to do all their maintenance work, et yeah. cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah. To keep things going and be prepared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, one of the things that I wanted to implore with um, uh, employees across the board in, in, in Belize, so that, you know, because at the end of the day, yes, preservation of life in terms of a shutdown is important because then that, that reduces the rate of transmission. But I also believe that um, employers should try their best, th those um, who can afford it, to, to um, at least tie it over, even if it's a percentage of folks' um, salary during this period because of the uncertainty of how long it will be. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's the message that they need to be sending to their employees to say on something. This is not business as usual. We can't afford. Because we have to take care of folks during this period of time, and as Kay said, we might end up with a much greater problem of a different sort. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. One of the things that will come out of this, I think, is people will look and see who were the humanitarian employers. Yeah. Who is it that I really feel has been a great leader through this crisis mm -hmm. and has, has guided me? And it, because how you feel in terms of your confidence on a day-to-day -day basis, um, at this, mo at this point in time, you don't know if your business will stay open. You don't know if you're, you'll keep your job, if your boss is going to call you and tell you not to come in ever again. Um, communication with your employees is so critically important yes. in a moment like this. Be, be open you know, and, and say, look, um, this is the situation. We'll ride, it. we'll ride this storm together and we'll get through it. And I mean, it's my firm belief that if you're, if you're as honest as you as, as as the information you have with yeah. your with your team, 
you'll come out the other end with a team that will say, look, you were straight with me when it counted. Mm -hmm. And, and they, people respect that. We, we all respect that. And I think that's part mm -hmm. of the going message is that, you know, despite the crisis that we're facing, if you stand shoulder to shoulder with the persons who you employ or the persons who you're employed mm -hmm. by, then it goes a long way in terms of the rebuilding process, mm -hmm. people's yeah. confidence in, in their employees and their employers. And also, I mean, I think we feel the same way about looking at businesses and how they step forward and what they're implementing as well, or going the extra mile. Well, okay. But let's, let's before we wrap up, just move away from kind of the micro picture to the macro picture. Uh, we had the Belize Hotel Association on last week, um, uh, Ted, and he spoke of uh, just a rough estimate at this time, $100 million a month in loss. Um, that's what they're looking at in just the cancellations that they faced and, and everything that uh, has happened with the pandemic. What are some of the things, and I can imagine as the business sector representing your members, we know there's a tough time ahead. Mm -hmm. what's, what's, what steps are being taken to do what we can now to somehow minimize the future financial crisis that everyone is predicted, predicting is looming? This is where we need the government. Yeah. This is, Come. this is, there's only so much that the banks can do. There's only so much that we together, um, well, together but alone can do. Mm -hmm. This is why Catherine represents us at the oversight. And you know we're, we're having as good a dialogue as we can um, at that level because if you look at it, the United States just approved a two trillion dollar, I, I can't even visualize the zeros, yeah. right? Yeah. A two trillion dollar package and now the debate out there among the pundits is, is it enough? Yeah. From that perspective, we have a four billion dollar economy, from which I think one of the one of the czars, I think Dr. Barnett mentioned, maybe it's 450, 500 million is project, projected yeah. to have disappeared yeah. over the next few months, um, which tallies with Ted's estimate of 100 million a month. If if you are making 20 percent of your economy disappear just like that, mm -hmm. there's going to be pain, and the only way you can uh, alleviate that magnitude of pain is for the government to throw stimulus. They, but yeah. how, they, how they throw the mechanisms for that stimulus yeah. are also important because you want it to be completely diffused throughout the economy and you want it to be done in a way that ultimately the employees and, and the employers benefit so that the economy not just survives this period but comes back roaring very quickly. What has been interesting to see though is that as a country, Belize has been adversely affected by COVID before the first case was yeah. ever confirmed. I mean, well, it's we like we, we suffered COVID before COVID even reached our yeah. shores in terms of how everything Did broke any Europe the cancellations, outbreak, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the cancellations began before the, the cruise yeah. Yeah. Um, shut yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. So, but going back to it, what, what are the recommendations that you're making? Um, I know it's not a, a very often sexy topic in terms of talking about assisting the business sector, um, you know, that's just a natural um, tendency that we have when we listen, but if we look long term, it is a conversation that has to be had. So what are you recommending? What are you looking at perhaps taking place in other parts of the world? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is a, and, and I know Kimo can also complement here um, on this point, but there is a number of different things that we're looking at. Um, for instance, we have been talking a lot about you know, how the banks can come into play mm -hmm. and how they can support um, some of the different measures that we've already seen in place um, will be beneficial. Um, but we know that right now, you know, we were talking about an idea, and maybe you can complement there, and then I will, I will yeah. add afterwards. Um, I, I think it, it drives to the, the, the public-private uh, partnership where yeah. um, the government really. Um, steps in in terms of assisting businesses, but I think it's, it should be for the sole purposes of ensuring that they maintain employ, em, employment for, for, for mm -hmm. folks, because I think that's where we're hurting. Um, I think all the other um, facets when you of say your business. Assisting businesses, what do you mean? Um, provide them s um, the same type Tax of support. Tax breaks, give money. I mean, th th those would be some of your soft things that that, that mm -hmm. is not immediately seen, but I as part of a. Um, uh, assistance package is really to put monies in, in, in business hands to say please pay your employees and ensure you're complementing and you know yeah. th 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 yeah. th there's different ways of getting that done but at the end of the day it's about part of 
preservation of life is ensuring that people have food on their table and um, they're paid. And, and, and whether it's a very a sliver of a percentage of what they're, 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 they should be earning, I think something is better than, um, any number is greater than, greater than zero is better than nothing. What, one of the, one of the um, we were briefly talking about this, but one of the points that I know Kibo and I were talking about is um, the components of identifying from, for instance, um, the next social security um, reporting, right, the levels of, of, of um, effect within these businesses, right, and mm -hmm. identifying stimulus based on that. That would be a data-driven approach, right? Mm -hmm. another, another key component or measure that we've been talking to the, um, to the government on is um, GST refunds, mm -hmm. right? That's another example as well, mm -hmm. um, where there can be a direct support to businesses and some businesses in the agricultural sector, for instance, that mm -hmm. we will need and we will depend on now and into the future as well. Yeah. Faster movement on, on um, collateral, for example, land transfers or land title um, for, for collateral, mm -hmm. um, moving faster so that a business can get its loan more quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the registration, right? Uh, there, we, you, you, um, you used a very important word there, innovation, right? There, there is some innovation coming out of this. Yeah. So how do businesses get the opportunity to establish and register their businesses and get their bank accounts going, yeah. right? To that, there is that component of it as well. There's a whole lot but to yeah. take in all yeah, at course. once. Yeah, it's yeah. And as we said in the meet, I know right now our primary focus has to be looking at the health um, and the survival of our people, people, but we cannot lose sight of the survival of the economy as well because- well, that too is the survival of our people. Yeah. Precisely, yeah. precisely. <laughs> just, just moving forward, um, we've seen some businesses step forward um, and, and they're offering assistance as well, which is great because we're seeing uh, where locally people are responding to help. Mm -hmm. But um, if we talk about what's, if we talk about the potential lockdown, and, and I'm still, I, I wanna get that issue addressed. Is there a time frame that you feel is best or uh, that you have looked at in terms of what could have the least impact on the economy? I think the medical experts, they're indicating that a 14-day. 14, day 14 in, in, days. In, in, the, in the first instance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it has to be reassessed then because if then, if, if, if the, um, if, if you look at, look around and see that there's no increase in infection and that kind of thing, then it's possibly working, but that, to me that has to be as reassessed at that, uh, after at that, that point. time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly what, uh, what Kimo said, that the, the medical experts, if, you, if you're gonna close for 10 days because that's all we can afford, it doesn't do any good for the virus. Oh, absolutely The whole not. idea of a lockdown is to, to solve the, the transmission of the virus. Yeah. Right. So if we're gonna do that, let's, let's do that, let's let the health community make use of that time to conduct testing and surveillance mm -hmm. in, in a sec sort of a, a more, um, I don't know what structure they're using, but if we can do it in a way where we're staying home and, and they're able to surveil the situation a little bit yeah. more clearly, um, that's gonna help us. And then, as Kimo says, at the end of that, with their testing happening during mm -hmm. that lockdown period, we can reassess and see how we go from there. I think one of the um, uh, silver lining in this, um, if, if there's any, um, I think Belizeans um, and folks, just ordinary folks getting the message because it, it's like you alluded to earlier, it's like we put ourselves through a self-induced lockdown mm -hmm. because, yeah. I mean, there's hardly any uh, activity on, on, on the streets that, you know, um, yeah. uh, compared to uh, We'd still prefer less, ago. let's just be clear. That's but true. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. True. yeah. yeah. But, but there is a silver lining. That, that's the point I wanted to get at. It escaped me. And that's that we can feed ourselves. And yeah, there's correct. a huge comfort, I think we don't talk about, that we will have food available at least. Whether people can buy it will be another story. But that there's food available in the country. So even though agriculture may not have been our biggest revenue earner, they've been providing for us. And mm -hmm. we're now dependent yeah. on it. Yeah, and, and to some extent look towards the future because if we can maintain agriculture in safety and continue doing our exports, we will be feeding the rest of the Caribbean yeah. through all of this as well. Yeah. All right. So we hear opportunities at yes. least. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The opportunities are there for everyone. It's, it's, yeah. it's hard to look at them as you're looking through this mess, mm -hmm. but if we pay close attention, we can find opportunities. Right. And more often than that, I think um, what helps in period like this is to be decisive and then carry out those actions immediately because yeah. whenever there's um, politics 
because I mean that 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 that's that, that that's the animal that we always um, fight with. Yeah. And I think if we um, uh, fast track everything, I think that it helps everyone in the process. It was a WHO official that was that there's a video floating around where he says, "Listen, moving fast is what's important, and it's moving fast in all respects." Yeah. Correct. Absolutely. Any closing message before we go? Um, just for everybody to stay safe and, and practice the protocols. Um, I think hand washing has become quite the habit now. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's so much more than that as well. Um, no hugging, as we were discussing before the show started. <laughs> um, but the whole idea is that we stay safe through this mess and we take care of each other. Um, I, I keep saying, and I say as much as I can, we are all in this together. Yes. And if we don't recognize that fact, then we're less likely to come out of this successful than if we realize, hang on, I've got to, I, Isani, Marlene, Kimo, I've got to work with everybody to get through this to the other end. If we do that and we pull together as a people, Belize is going to be a really fantastic example of how to get through a pandemic. Right. Right. Well, thank you very much for coming in and having this conversation with us. We're gonna go ahead and take our final break and when we come back, we'll have our wrap up, so stay tuned.